options rather than less, which is why uh, when Frank says maybe uh, the old societies had other, was it? Uh, yes, there are all sorts of ways mankind could end up forever locked in some particular way of looking at things, but it seems to me none of them could be very good. That's why we need progress and understanding. There must be something better than all the things that humans have done so far. I think that gets into another dimension, which is critical thinking, critical evaluation. And as the amount of media that bombards everybody increases, most of it driven by commercial advertising or political uh, yeah. slants, the need for the individual to be able to filter and assess and, and uh, make critical comparison arises. So maybe we were, the word education will become obsolete. Training is extremely important because the jobs are not manual labor anymore. You're not born with the capability. Right. You have to have a lot of knowledge of how things work. But you're also, the most important thing is the ability to think critically about the kind of information and other things that you're exposed to. Bard, regarding critical thinking, what, what do you think will happen to religion in a high-tech society? Scientists have often thought religion would go away. It certainly hasn't. It's, it's a very adaptive belief system. I'm sure it will adapt to the times, uh, long to the point that we've evolved into different types of information creatures. So I think it'll be here. I think it'll be just as virulent as ever. And I, I think it's not at all clear, but it, it tends to be the basis of, of uh, large conflicts around the world. And as countries splinter into ever finer groups and communicate on the internet and other forms, I think that will only increase. Marvin, well, well, I think uh, uh, Bruce put a, his finger on it because one thing we have to do to understand things well is have critical thinking. That is, somebody tells you something, you say, well, what's the evidence for that, what's not? Uh, in most religions, the idea is that, well, there are certain questions we can't decide in any such way, and uh, so it's important to have faith. And if you're very good at having faith, then uh, it means you're not so good at critical thinking. Some people seem to be able to tolerate both, but uh, in general, I think if you put emphasis on believing a set of rules that comes from somebody who's an authority figure, then... Uh, so there, you then there are terrible dangers. The, the structure of an authority that you're not allowed to question undermines uh, understanding and progress. You see faith and critical thinking as mutually exclusive. I do. Now, I, somebody just wrote a book show, saying that, well, they're concerned with s subjects that are so different that uh, they're compatible. But I don't think so. Well, Frank. much as, yeah, I mean, I just say that much as, uh, you know, uh, uh, faith-based reasoning may be offensive to, you know, to, to scientists. It seems to me it's extremely important and it's not likely to disappear. It's the basis for civil society. It it's socializes people. It's not the only people. basis. It socializes people. It's what creates community. And I think one of the reasons that uh, uh, people have returned to religion is precisely that they're lonely and, and you know, it, it, it gives them uh, a way of, of connecting. You don't see a downside? Of course there's a downside. No, but well, I think what the, about the religious yeah, but, wars and the ethnic but the evidence and so forth? We haven't in, fought many religious wars in, in the United States. Uh, in right. the last but in the last States? 30 years or 40 years, which has been mm -hmm. this extraordinary technolo technological revolution all over the whole world, the fundamental parts of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, Judaism are all on the rise. Now, why but, is isn't that? Isn't that fascinating? It's fascinating, but it's significant. That's, it real, that's real information being fed back right, by real human society. That's right. And the answer is there is a need for belief systems and explanations, which the populace is not receiving from the technological revolution going I, on. I think well, but that I, is fundamental to our understanding. But I think the, we see some of the needs. One is that people don't know how to do critical thinking, and the other is yeah. Bart said. But critical thinking is not going to help you with well, death. With, yes, it is. Bart said. You can also learn to live with doubt, and you don't have to have somebody tell you, here's the answer. And that's what we lack. Well, I think faith you're, is the. Yeah, but you're imagining people to be little autonomous that have no emotions. What? With, with the, when you deal with death or obvious bad things that have no rational explanation, yeah. there has to be a context for real human beings to deal with that. Well, I disagree. I think death has a rational explanation. If it weren't for religion, in the 2,000 years that science didn't develop, we wouldn't have death. We would have longevity. You could live as long as you can. 
and it's the belief in the afterlife which is why we don't live forever. It's a, I think the fundamental paradox <laughs> is that we have been deprived of immortality. I wish we could settle this question empirically. <laughs> well, in a hundred years, when you have... And one thing is for sure that this show is, is, is about finish, so we have to ask a prediction question going forward a hundred years. What kinds of changes will technology make on human thinking? George? Uh, I, I think human thinking is going to make changes on technology. Okay, <laughs> Frank? <laughs> well, we will probably be smarter in a lot of ways, um, just as we're taller and healthier and live longer. Bart? We'll be smarter because we first implant computers into our brain, then ultimately we replace our brain with a chip, and we'll have the irony of thinking fuzzy thoughts in a black and white digital medium. <laughs> that may be better for you. <laughs> Bruce? Well, I'll give an outrageous answer. Uh, I think the term we may mean something different. Uh -huh. That we are going to be connected in so many ways with so many other people, in yeah. both past and present, that uh, that question would be looked at a very different way. Huh? I think you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with them all. It seems that technology is transforming our thinking in at least three ways. Information is freely available, so ideas rapidly cross cultures. People are empowered, so individual choice is strengthened. Time is compressed, so decision-making is rushed. But notice what happens. With more diverse ideas and more empowered people, but with less time to assess value, this new thinking is at once creative, innovative, volatile, and turbulent. We have to face contradictions like these to stay closer to truth. I'm Robert Kuhn.